Welcome to the back of my Honda. Jesus, this is a nice Honda. Yes, it is. Now, like and subscribe. <laughs> Just kidding. The reason I'm in the back of here and not recording where I normally do is because it's the school summer holidays and uh, my kids are always in. So um, this is really the only place I can come to record in peace and quiet. So here we are. In the last part, I made a start on the engine mounts, in particular the plates that connect the engine in the gearbox. Then I hit you with a to be continued, and for that I'm really sorry. I actually had a bit more progress that I could have included in that video, but it was only partial progress that would have made the video end at kind of a strange point, and it was already getting a bit too long, so that's why I split it into two parts and ended it there. In fact, that whole video was a bit rushed and not really up to my normal standards, so in case you missed it, I'll just quickly go over the general idea of those parts before moving on with the rest. Starting off with the gearbox side, I cut down the box section to form a C-channel uh, that would cover the mounting tabs on the gearbox casing. The part I'm making here replicates a lot of the conversion mounts that you see readily available on the market for early Golfs, Caddies and the like. I began by attempting to replicate the profile of the casing to get a close fit, but quickly realised that there was basically no point in doing that, so that's why I went with the straight cuts instead. So shims are there to make up the slight discrepancy between the width of the gearbox tabs and the internal width of the box section I used, so that nothing rattles or wiggles about. Uh, and one of them is thicker because the rearmost mounting tab is a bit narrower than the other two. Another thing about those tabs is that the front two are internally threaded, uh, but the rear one isn't. This is just from how the factory mount attaches to this section, so I'll need to use different hardware for the final fit and ensure that there's a captive nut on the rear hole. Moving on to the engine side, this is just a steel plate with three holes and three very long standoffs. I used M10 threaded rod as a stand-in for the factory bolt so that I could slip this tube over for measurement and alignment. After measuring for the right length and checking that the depth is the same on all three, I used the death lathe to cut them down to size. The reason for the shortened rod here was so that I could align the standoff properly without the rod getting in the way during welding. I overboard the holes on the plate ever so slightly so that I could get a tack weld between the plate and the end of the standoff. Then I removed the whole thing, welded the other side, cleaned up any tacks and repeated the same for the other two. These welds don't need to be great because they're not structural. The hardware clamps them between the main plate and the engine block. All the welds do is keep everything in one piece so that you don't have to worry about losing or forgetting to install one of the standoffs. Oh, and the reason for using this nut here instead of the original bolt is that the factory mount is normally thicker at this part, so the standard bolt is just too long. This is just a placeholder to keep everything tightened up for now. Anyway, with all that covered off, here's how I did the rest of it. It made sense to have the static parts for each mount in place before building up the structures to connect them together. I had this marred steel pipe sitting around which was close to the ideal size I needed, so I had the polyurethane bushes turned down on an actual real lathe to match the pipe's internal diameter. Then I used the death lathe again to uniformly cut the pipe down to the correct length, and now I have two engine mount bushings with sleeves. With them fitted to the chassis with temporary hardware, it's just a case of making up some structure to connect them to the base parts attached to each end of the powertrain. <laughs> To the decent amount of room around this part of the engine bay, this mount was pretty simple to make and to be honest I just winged it. The engine side was going to take a bit more thought though. 
See, making prototypes using bits of cardboard is all well and good when you have the space and you can see what you're doing, but I really didn't have much room to work with here. On top of that, the mount on this side was going to need to be more complex, so I don't think cardboard-aided design or CAD for short was going to cut it here. I think it's time for some WAP. That's whiteboard-aided prototyping for those who don't know. So conceptually, the engine side mount basically consists of two pieces of angle steel, one that connects to the chassis and one that connects to the engine, and it will be connected with a bolt and a captive nut. Slightly more detailed than that, uh, we have the existing bushing up here, we've got the chassis rail and then we've got the wheel arch tub there as well. This is the plate that's on the side of the engine along with the, uh, the dowels that go through into the engine and the bolt. So if we look up here in this isometric view, we've got a piece of angle steel uh, which actually it's not really a piece of angle steel, it's actually just a piece of flat bar at this stage, but I've bent it over and uh, used it as gussets to connect to this main plate. And then on top of that, we've got an actual piece of angle steel, uh, which will bolt down onto it. And then there will be these plates that come off of that, like this. Uh, and the reason why we're doing it in two pieces and not one is because it will allow me to bring the whole engine up, right? Because the engine has to come in from underneath, just like they tend to do in the factory. And if I make it one piece, then you kind of have to do this weird thing where you have to move this side of the engine up first, hook it over the engine mount, and then bring this side up, which is doable, but with the size and space constraints of everything inside this bay, it's much easier to just bring the whole thing up on the platform down here, tie this side in, and then bolt this in from the top, right? So that's what we're going to do instead. It does make it a little bit more complicated because Making this a single piece would actually be easier, but I think this is probably the right way to go about it. Happy with all that? Good, excellent. Let's see what I can knock together then. So that was a fail. Uh, so the problem is, is when you're trying to hammer down fairly thick steel, is that it wants to try and warp on itself. So as you can see here, it's kind of started to bend over the top, which I didn't want to do. And uh, the reason it's, I've done that is because I haven't really put any relief in the bend here. I did score it with the angle grinder beforehand, but that wasn't enough. So what I should have done is cut this little slit at the end there, just so that it has something to bend over. And then maybe a couple of relief holes as well. So I'm gonna try again, and hopefully this time it'll work.
Right, so at this stage I just tacked everything up. I also tacked the upper and lower halves of the mount together so that I can drill their connecting holes in one piece, which just helps ensure that they align properly later on. What I really wanted to do at this point was see if these mounts would hold the engine as they were. My logic here was that if they supported the weight with the tack welds alone, then they'd definitely be strong enough once welded up fully. Free. I've left it there just so that if it does fall it has less distance to fall. Let's have a look at the damage if any. Okay so what I'm looking for here are any tacks that look like they've uh, come apart. Uh, this side is looking okay. Yep. Yeah. Uh, this side there's a lot more. Ah there you go immediately. See that down there? Just there. You can't see because there's no light now. So that tack there has come off. Now that's just a tack to keep the two pieces together. It's not part of the structure. So what I'm going to have to do is jack this side back up and stick another tack in there. I just didn't tie that one properly. So I've added in some disgusting looking tacks just to try and keep this section a bit more sturdy. Luckily, I'm going to be able to take this whole, this whole assembly out grind back all the crappy welds and put some nice ones in. But it seems to be strong. Um, I can give this a good, I'm gonna grab something like it. The bushing is giving way more than the, any of the mounts are, the, everything seems solid. And uh, this still needs more reinforcement. So down here, for example, we're gonna have some gusseting that comes down and uh, the same on this side over here, we'll have a nice uh, gusset that comes over here box that in so it's stronger uh, so in terms of sort of strength I'm quite happy with it also these tacks down here are going to be replaced with bolts so that will make it even stronger still uh, so and yeah just so that you can see it's actually I was gonna say but now it's uh... so this is now free floating so now the engine is completely suspended by the mounts and the chassis brackets. That's a pretty major milestone to me. This looks terrible, but it, it, it'll, it'll all get cleaned up and, and look a lot nicer when it's done. But I'm happy with the way that it's keeping the engine in the bay, which is their job. Time to pull the engine back out again so that I can remove the mounts and finish them off. The gear shifter arm hits the side of the mount, so I removed a small section to give it some room. Then I added in a strengthening gusset. The lower half of the engine mount gets welded together and I begin to drill out some holes. Like I said earlier, keeping these tacked together means that nothing is going to shift around and cause the holes to become misaligned. Something that is especially important for the frontmost bolt because that has to nestle between two uprights and there's absolutely no room for error. As it turned out, there are a few small tack welds on the inside that prevent the flanged bolt head from reaching the bottom, so I had to make a spacer to clear them for now. With that bolt sorted, I now have a new problem. Don't worry about it, let's just move on to something else. When I cut the side plate, I wanted to keep as much material intact as possible to begin with. The thickness of the material does mean that it encroaches into the path of the accessory belt though, which is less than ideal really. I knew this was going to be a problem because if you look at the factory mount, it's shaped to ensure that the clearance is there. I knew that cutting the plate down was going to be fairly trivial and you can always remove material, but it's not always as easy putting it back on. Anyway, I cut a decent section off, then used it to make another support gusset.
Yes, I did forget to weld along the top edge. I'll make sure to catch it next time the mount comes off, I promise. Now I have to deal with this intersecting bolt conundrum. Fortunately, there is a natural order of operations at play here. The upper bolt of the mount is always the first to be removed or the last to be fitted. So that means that the long bolt that goes into the engine block is always first in or last out. With this in mind, all I need to do is give the engine bolt a clear path, which unfortunately means I have to do this. This looks a tad extreme, but it is just a captive nut. I can always cut it off and add another. Plus, there are still threads on the side I ground down, so the bolt has something to bite on all around. It just has a bit less on that one side. Just a case of adding some gussets on either side and the engine side is complete enough. Let's see how fitting the engine is using this two piece design. Honestly, I'm really happy with how this worked out. The gearbox side went in nice and easily, and then with two bolts, you just line the two halves of the engine mount up, and it all just pulls itself into line when you tighten the bolts up. The only trouble I had was trying to get the rearmost bolt to tighten because I forgot to weld in the captive nut underneath, and I couldn't get a tool under there, so it just kept spinning. Once I did get it tight enough, it wasn't moving, so all good. The mounts still need a bit of tidy up, bit of pain, I think I'm also going to redo the bushings at some point because I welded a lot of this together with these installed and they've melted in one or two places. Uh, these are fine for now, they just look a bit ugly, that's all. I also need to make the stabilizer mounts for the torque reaction. Until then, the engine is kind of swinging in place. I have an idea of how I'm going to tackle that, but that's going to come later. So there we have it. The engine is hanging in the bay, fully supported by engine mounts and brackets that I somehow willed into existence. To say I'm really happy to have gotten to this point is a bit of an understatement, but then I am my own biggest critic and I know that there's a lot that I can do to improve everything you've seen today. But let me know what you think. Maybe you would have done things a little bit different. If it's constructive, then I want to read it. We managed to get the channel past 500 subscribers a few days ago, so a big welcome to everyone who's joined recently. I think my next video is going to be on the Civic, but I've already recorded some micro stuff for the next part of this build, so stick around for that. And until then, See you soon. Oh my God, it's so hot in here.